All right, I thought I'd do something a bit different and go through a bit of uh, NES game modding. This is uh, Dick Tracy on the NES. Uh, I had this game as a kid. Uh, never really played it much. It's, a, I think, a fairly difficult uh, platformer, but also it's got uh, detective elements. You have to uh, find clues and solve the case. Uh, and one thing that uh, really bothered me uh, as a kid, uh, you've got a gun and your fists you can use also, but uh, if you shoot the unarmed thugs, uh, even though they do try and punch you to death, uh, you lose uh, one bar of health each time. So as a kid, you know, I would just go through and just uh, shoot all the enemies and then uh, rapidly lose all my health because I was shooting the unarmed ones as well as the armed ones. So since I recently got into NES programming, uh, I thought it would be interesting to have a look at this and uh, maybe mod that out, uh, make it so that uh, you don't lose any health from shooting the unarmed thugs. So to start, I go to this uh, warehouse here. Uh, it's got two unarmed thugs right at the beginning, and then there's some armed ones uh, shortly later. So it's a good spot to kind of uh, test this out. So the first thing I do is make a couple of save states. Uh, this will be helpful for uh, testing and then uh, reloading and testing again. So here you can see I shoot the two unarmed thugs and lose uh, one health point uh, each. Uh, and then I get shot a couple more times and uh, lose all my health and it's game over. So the first thing is I need to find uh, where the health is stored. That'll be the first step along getting the uh, mod done. So first we go to uh, Tools, Cheats, and then open up the Cheat Finder. Now this part isn't particularly difficult. Uh, I've been doing this for probably, uh, I don't know, 20 years since a friend first showed me ZSNES. I'm sure most people who've used emulators before have probably at some point uh, you know, use the cheat finder to uh, freeze your HP or give you more experience or whatever. The cheat finder in MSN is a bit different than in most other emulators. Uh, usually you search based on what the new value is, but this searcher is based off of, uh, from the perspective of the old value. So as your health is decreasing, you want to search for the previous value was greater. In most emulators, it's typically the new value is smaller. That can get a bit confusing, so you just have to watch that you don't hit the wrong one and uh, have to start over again. It's also useful to occasionally search for uh, the value was unchanged. Uh, that will help eliminate any uh, constantly decreasing values such as timers or you know, enemies' uh, movement positions. Also, I don't typically start with a specific value, although you can do that uh, because you don't necessarily know how the game is actually storing it. Uh, I believe he starts off with four stars of health, but that could be uh, four stars with then the decimal or you know or the half star stored in another uh, RAM position, or that could be stored as eight to begin with and then each point is a half a star or there could be some other scheme where maybe the higher bits are used for something you know if he can only have up to four or five stars of health the higher the highest two or three bits are going to be unused so perhaps they could store your lives or something also i don't necessarily know if it's going to be a zero or one indexed if he runs out of stars is that uh Will that be at zero or will that be negative? This is uh, less important with health. It most likely is, uh, you know, just the number that's being displayed, particularly if it is showing a number. Like if it said you have five health on the screen, then you would know, okay, that is most likely going to be stored as five in RAM. But uh, for some other values, if you were looking for, say, his uh, X position or his Y position, or something like that, those are more often stored in uh, a bit more complicated uh, formats. So after a few repetitions, uh, I found that value at uh, location 663 is currently set to 4. Uh, and I've got two stars and uh, you seem to be able to lose a half a star uh, at a time, so that would that's likely the correct location. So to test it, I'll just add a cheat here, uh, permanently fixing it at 5. 
Now you, you will notice that the stars do not change immediately. Uh, in most games, they're not going to update the display constantly every frame. They're only going to uh, refresh what the stars are, or whatever the number or whatever is displaying uh, when it actually changes within the game logic. So then I just move forward here and get hit. Uh, that way it will update it. Uh, and we do see here uh, the stars, as soon as he gets hit, uh, they lock to uh, two and a half. So that makes sense. Uh, each half is uh, one unit, so there's five total. So next, under the debug option, I'll open up the debugger and the memory tools. So in the memory tools, I'll make sure I'm in the CPU memory viewer uh, and then go to search and go to. You can also use control G and then just go to the uh, address we found in the cheat finder, uh, hex 663. So then I will uh, right click on it and go to edit label. Uh, now I can give it a name and uh, comment it. This name will replace any instances of the uh, address in the debug view. That will just make it easier to read the code. So next I add a breakpoint on that memory location uh, and I only check the write box. So now anytime health is written to within the game, uh, it will break and I will see the code that is doing it. Uh, we have to hit play here to continue now that the debugger is running. So here I shoot the unarmed thug and it immediately breaks. Our health doesn't change because we still have the cheat running. Um, however, it does try and write the value anyways. So this uh, subroutine here appears to be the uh, subroutine for taking damage. From the start we have load x uh, hex uh, address 710. That will load the value stored at 710 into the x register. Next we will uh, branch not equal to 97f8. You can see right there that 97f8 is the uh, return from subroutine call. Uh, that will uh, leave the subroutine and go back to wherever this was called from. Uh, so that will branch if the value stored in X now, which is the value from 710, uh, it will branch if it is not zero. So it's likely that that is perhaps an invincibility timer. Uh, maybe when he is flashing there after getting hit, that is set to a non-zero value and then counts down uh, and so if he takes damage again while he's still flashing, then uh, he won't, it'll skip out of this subroutine and not actually do the damage. Next, we store the current A register value into the address uh, 43E and then load our health value into A. Next, we set the carry flag, that's the SEC command. When you're adding, you normally want to clear the carry flag. But when you're subtracting, you normally want to set the carry flag to begin with. So next we subtract from A, which is set to the health value, the value stored in address 43E, which is what A was to begin with. So we're effectively subtracting the original value of A from health. So A is basically like the argument to the function, uh, and it's how much damage to do. The next line is branch if minus to 97F9. So if the result of the subtraction goes negative, 
then we will branch out of this function uh, and to a different one because you see that is actually one address past the RTS. That code hasn't actually ran yet. I haven't died, so the debugger doesn't know that uh, 97F9 is code or data or what. That's why it uh, says unidentified block and I can't actually see what's there. Uh, but anyways, that is probably some function to handle him uh, keeling over and then the uh, game over screen appearing. Since this uh, hit doesn't kill him, uh, it doesn't actually branch to the 97F9, so it will then go to the next uh, command, which is uh, the jump subroutine uh, 85C6. I didn't uh, do much with that subroutine uh, because it didn't seem relevant right now, but uh, I had a bit of a look at it later. Uh, it looks like it's doing a whole bunch of math with the health and uh, calling a whole bunch of other subroutines. So likely what it's doing is setting up uh, like his invincibility flicker, uh, changing the stars to display on the top, uh, playing a sound effect and so on. And the next thing that happens here is we uh, RTS, which is just a return, basically. So we see there that we do go into the same subroutine, whether we are shooting an unarmed thug or getting shot by an armed one. Uh, that's a good indication that we are correct, and this is the damage-taking subroutine. So after loading the save state to go back to the uh, start here with the two unarmed thugs and then turning off the uh, no damage cheat, uh, I then am uh, poking around at the code for a bit here. And just like we did with the uh, memory address for the health, you can right click on uh, any command and do edit label and then give it uh, a name and then uh, that will appear over it like I've done here with the take damage uh, subroutine. So any spot that has like uh, JSR address 97E1 will insta instead say uh, JSR take damage. Uh, and that just makes it easier to read. So next I use the uh, F10 key, which is uh, just basically go to the next command. I uh, use that repeatedly uh, all the way through the take damage subroutine. Uh, then eventually we get out of the subroutine. Uh, and you can see up here where we are. There is the JSR take damage uh, call that we must have just been in. Another way to find out where a subroutine was called from would be to go to uh, debug and then trace viewer. That way would be more reliable in some cases, uh, such as if the subroutine doesn't actually jump back to where it was called from, but if it uh, just jumps somewhere else and keeps going. So we can see here this is basically a big like if, else if, else if, else if, and so on uh, statement or a, a switch statement and all of them uh, branch to F4E1, uh, which is down here just above the take damage. Uh, it loads to the value 2 into the A register. Uh, and if we remember uh, in the take damage subroutine, uh, the value that was stored going into that subroutine uh, is how much health uh, he loses and we do lose one full star which is two uh, units of health uh, from shooting these guys so adding this label do to damage uh, really lets you see exactly what's happening here so on the line load a uh, from address 49b uh, comma y that will uh, load. That will take the value stored in Y and add it to 49B, and then uh, load that address. So Y is currently set to three. So 49B plus three equals 49E. So it will load the value 
stored at 49E into A. So it's likely that uh, 49B is the start of basically an array of, uh, say, all the enemies on screen or something. And Y is the index that's uh, saying like which enemy we just shot. So it's likely getting some kind of uh, ID from that array uh, and then comparing the ID value uh, to each of these and then doing something uh, depending on what the ID is. And the ID is probably saying like unarmed thug, armed thug, uh, boss one, boss two, uh, I don't know if there's like hostages or something, uh, and probably other types of unarmed thugs, maybe like if they've got different color coats or something and they take more damage, uh, that would be a different ID. Uh, because we can see here there seem to be quite a few IDs, about uh, eight or so, uh, that all make you do two damage uh, if you shoot them. Uh, and there seem to be three other IDs at the start there that it's comparing to that uh, they jump to various other subroutines. So the uh, comp command basically just compares what's in the A register to the value that it says. Uh, and since it's a uh, hashtag and then a dollar sign, that's saying like compare to this value. It's not to an address or anything. It's just comparing it to uh, whatever that number is. Um, the compare doesn't affect the number stored in A, uh, but it will set the various uh, flags. Uh, and the zero flag will be set if they are the same number, and then the uh, branch if equal uh, will jump to that subroutine uh, if the zero flag is set. So this is basically saying like compare to 1C, uh, if the result is zero, jump to the two damage. Uh, compare to 2-1, uh, if the result is zero, jump to two damage, and so on. At the start there, there is a compare to 7-2, and then uh, branch if carry set to B508. The compare command will set the carry flag if the A register is larger or equal to the number you're comparing it with. So in this case, that means if the uh, enemy index is hex 72 or larger, then we branch uh, way down to uh, B508 uh, and skip all of the uh, do damage stuff. Then we compare it to uh, hex 39 and then branch to B512 if it's equal to that. So that must be one specific uh, enemy type or something. Uh, perhaps it's a hostage or something that uh, instantly game overs you if you get that or something else like that. So to achieve the mod of uh, taking no damage when you shoot these guys, uh, one thing we can do here is uh, change the load A uh, to under the do to damage uh, and just change that to a zero. Uh, that will have the side effect of uh, still going into the damage routine and uh, giving us invincibility frames and so on. Uh, but it is the uh, simplest way to do this. Of course, this may have uh, some other unattended side effects as well. Uh, you know, there might be hostages or something else that uh, you do, you take two damage if you shoot them, and maybe you would still want that to be uh, in place. Uh, but I'll, I'll just do the uh, changing the load A2 to, to load A0, uh, because that's the simplest way. Probably the best way to do it would be to find all the IDs of the enemies that uh, you can shoot, and then uh, for every compare and branch equal pair, uh, replace them all with uh, no operations. So one thing I just checked on, uh, which would definitely be a good thing to check if you were to do that and uh, knop out the uh, various uh, compares, uh, is to check the, the ID of uh, the gun-wielding uh, thugs and see what happens when you shoot them. So checking their IDs shows that uh, it's set to hex 1-4, so when you shoot them it does uh, go through all of the compares, and then uh, at the very end there's a branch not equal that then uh, branches down to uh, B4EE, 
and B4EE is just past the take damage. So it does seem that if you shoot the gun wielding thugs, it just skips through and down to here. So it is okay to knock out uh, any compares to the IDs that you don't want. And testing it here shows that uh, shooting the unarmed thugs uh, still causes us to flash and get invincibility frames, but we don't take any damage. Uh, and getting shot or punched uh, does still do damage and we can still die. It would of course be a good idea uh, if I was to release this to play through more of the game and just test that uh, everything else works. Again, uh, see that there's no hostages or anything like that that uh, maybe you do want to still take damage from shooting them. I also try here setting it so that you take 6 damage when you shoot one of the unarmed thugs. Uh, as you can see that causes a graphical problem with the uh, star display for your health. Uh, the engine must be set up to only ever uh, do at most uh, 2 damage or 1 full star at a time. So taking 3 stars at once causes it to uh, only remove uh, one star from the display. However, it is removing the actual correct value uh, in RAM, so you do still die after shooting just two thugs. And you can go to, uh, in the debugger, go to File and then Save ROM as, uh, to save a copy of the edit as a new ROM. Uh, you can also uh, save edits as IPS, uh, this will create a patch file. Uh, Messen and most other emulators will automatically load a IPS file if it has the same name as the ROM that you're running. Uh, and the IPS file is what would be okay to distribute like on uh, ROM hacking sites. You also may want to go to File, Workplace, Export Labels, and that will export a file that contains like the uh, do to damage, uh, the take damage, the health, all, all the things that we've typed, uh, and then later you can uh, import labels and continue working if you were to do more with this. So here I set the uh, do two damage subroutine uh, back to doing two damage as it was originally. Uh, and then I'm going to go in and just knock out the compare and uh, branch. And I'm just doing that for uh, comparing to ID 1.5 uh, because that's the ID of these uh, unarmed thugs. So you just right click on the line that you want to change and then select edit code. You have to put in uh, as many bytes of uh, opcodes as the original was. Uh, both the compare and the branch equal are two bytes, so we need to put in two knobs. If you wanted to, say, add in a much longer subroutine or something like that, you would have to find some unused uh, memory and then jump to it uh, because all of the commands, or most of them, uh, work on reading or writing from some specific memory address. Uh, the branch equals, branch not equal, and so on, they're uh, relative. They, they say, like, go, you know, 30 uh, opcodes ahead or whatever. Uh, so if you were just uh, inserting or deleting opcodes without fixing everything in the ROM, then they would be jumping to the wrong spot or reading the wrong memory or whatever. So now testing this shows that uh, when we shoot the unarmed thugs, uh, nothing happens. We don't take damage and we also don't get the invincibility frames uh, because it's not even going into the do damage subroutine. So there are, of course, other interesting things you could easily do to change how the game works. Uh, for instance, uh, looking at the code, I just noticed 
uh, right below where the jump subroutine uh, take damage is called. Uh, we load hex 19 into the A register and then store that into memory address 710. In the take damage subroutine, uh, that is the value that is uh, checked, and then we only take damage uh, if it's a zero. Uh, so that's likely your uh, invincibility frame counter. You get uh, hex 19 uh, iframes, which is uh, 25 iframes, uh, assuming it is decremented every frame. Uh, but you could, for instance, change that easily uh, so that you get longer uh, invincibility or shorter. And so one way to do you know, longer mods or find more difficult stuff uh, would be to uh, just continue kind of labeling uh, different functions and variables and uh, kind of working out backwards from the spot where you take damage. Uh, you know, if we keep going, if we uh, return from this subroutine, we're probably in like a much larger subroutine that uh, calls various other ones like, uh, you know, the bullet uh, physics and the, uh, I don't know, other stuff like that. Another thing you could do is uh, put a watch on the, or a breakpoint on the address of the array where all the enemy indexes are stored. Uh, watch for that to be uh, written to. Uh, and then, you know, as you go into a level or a new screen, uh, an enemy, when it spawns, should eventually be written to that location. Uh, and then you can have a look at that code and see where it's reading that information from. Uh, and there should probably be a table in uh, program memory somewhere that has like a list of, uh, you know, all the enemies, uh, where they should spawn and what type they are. And so you could then go in and change that table to, you know, change the type of enemy. All right, uh, I guess that uh, wraps that up. Uh, I'll put a bunch of uh, links to various resources, uh, like the 6502 uh, assembly documents I use and uh, the Nestev wiki. Uh, I'll put that in the comments, they're pretty useful.